Hello and welcome to High School Football on WOSN. Alongside Dar Nevergal, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight we are in Pandora for a non-conference showdown between the Pandora Gilboa Rockets and the Bluffton Pirates. Dar, excited to be with you. It's 1-0 Bluffton, 0-1 Pandora Gilboa, but a rivalry, close proximity. This should be a really, really good game tonight. Oh, I think so, and if we haven't repeated what we had last year in the overtime win by Bluffton, It'll be a really good game. You know, Bluffton comes in, they won their first game against Corey Ross in 67 to seven. But, you know, Pandora Gilboa had Columbus Grove their first game, their rivalry from Route 12, and they lost that game. But, you know, this could be pretty evenly matched, actually. They kept a good quarterbacks out there on both sides of the ball, good running backs as well. So we are about ready for the national anthem here. We're gonna step aside. When we return, we'll have some keys to the game for you and kickoff right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Pandora, where we are almost ready for kick. Bluffton won the toss and deferred, so Pandora will return the kick and start with the ball. Now, Dar, before we get into this, how about some keys to the game first for Bluffton? Well, looking at the Bluffton Pirates, like I said, they won the opening game 67-7, to but, you know, they want to stay ahead of the chains. They want to move the ball consistently down the field, make some long drives, then finish off with some points. And the other thing is they want to take care of the football, which everybody says, you know, limit your turnovers, cause some turnovers, and the big thing is win third down, and they were able to do that last week. They want to continue that again this week. And then for Pandora, who come into tonight 0-1, as we said, a loss to their Route 12 rivals, Columbus Grove, another team from the NWC, which Bluffton represents as well. How about some keys for the Rockets? Well, the Rockets came out last week against Columbus Grove, and they gave up some big points in the first half, so they need to get off to a fast start here against this Bluffton team. You know, they need to get their offense going a little bit earlier. They scored in the second half last week. They need to get going earlier. They want to win the turnover battle as well, as most coaches do, but they want to play good assignment football. They want their guys to stay where their, you know, their assignments are, you know, be able to tackle on the open field, be where you're supposed to be. That's the big thing for this Pandora team. And we are set for kick. It'll be Kyle Basil for Bluffton kicking off. Now, if you were uh, tuned in to WOSN just a few days ago, you saw Kyle Basil on the soccer field, the goalkeeper for the Bluffton Pirates. And now he takes a step back and he will boot this one off. Back to return for the Rockets. It's number 21, Ethan Lugaville, and number 10, Aiden Morris, beautiful night for football, not too hot. The sun will be down all the way shortly, and we are destined for a great game. Referees waiting. Clock hasn't been reset quite yet. There it Bluffton, goes. As we see relatively often as of late, winning that first game against Corey Rawson by a pretty big margin, that Corey Rawson team won that is Rebuilding, we'll say, uh, and so it'll be interesting to see how Bluffton fares against an opponent that uh, certainly on paper seems more skilled than their former opponents, but this is a oh hot my. start for the Rockets as Basil comes up and makes the tackle, but not before a nice return out to the 42-yard line for Aiden, Aiden or Ethan Morris. Luganville, excuse me. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, this, this Pandora team, you know, they, like I said, they lost to Columbus Grove in their first game, but that's a good Columbus Grove team over there. They got off to a slow start. That was the biggest thing. You know, they gave up a lot of points in the first half, most of them. Then they came back and they scored theirs in the second half. But you got to get off to a quick start here. And their quarterback needs to really get this team firing all cylinders right off the bat. Our scoreboard tonight, sponsored by Webb Insurance. The Rockets come out in spread formation. Two wide receivers split either direction. That's Ethan Lugabill in the backfield with quarterback Carson Meyer. Meyer hands it to Lugabill, and he's oh, got a nice that. carry as he wow. puts his shoulder down and crosses into Pirate territory. Good enough for a Citizens National Bank first down. How about Ethan Lugabill, who last week went for 101 yards on the ground? Well, he showed not only his speed where he burst right through that line, but he also showed his power. He just leveled the, the linebacker as he came through and just gonna put his shoulder down and ran right into him. Same formation for the Rockets. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. They'll take the snap, hand it right back. This time the Pirates meet him in the backfield. And in fact, it's a fumble and a recovery by the Pirates as Ian Riemann comes up with the football. 
And a promising start to the drive for the Rockets ends in a turnover. Yeah, that was a big turnover right there. And I mean, look at Bill went in right in the center of that line there, and there was multiple guys there for Bluffton just tackling him, you know, just to force that ball out of there. So the Pirates now onto the field with their offense. They're led by quarterback Garrett Bogart through six passes, completed five of them. Five of those completions, or excuse me, three of those five completions went for touchdowns as he racked up 169 yards through the air. And he will start with an option play. He has a little seam and a nice pickup on first down for Bogart. Yeah, that's the dangerous thing about Bogart too, is you know, not, you just saw it on that play right there. You know, he, throw, he throws well, but he also can run the football. And you know, you got a mobile quarterback back here who's gonna pick out the lines. You know, Pandora got in there really quickly, but you know, he was able to maneuver his way out of there. Bogart picks up eight yards on the ground. He had two rushes for 16 yards and a touchdown against Corey Ross in last week. Halfway to that total after the first play of the game. Shuttler goes in motion. Swing pass out to Shuttler. That one's on the ground and they wave it incomplete. Now I'll tell you what, that was about as close as it gets to a backward pass. Pirates probably lucky that the refs blew that one dead. Yeah, they certainly will. And the big thing, too, on that play there was number 11 for Bandor Gobo getting, you know, that's Tanner likely out there, able to get a hand on the receiver as he went by, you know, and the ball, when the ball is in the air. That brings up third down and two for the Pirates. They split one out wide to the left. That's Hayden Durth. Yeah, Durth had three catches last week for 92 yards and two touchdowns. Bogart takes the snap, another option play. He's got some space, he's got the first down and more. A Citizens National Bank first down as he crosses the 40 up to the 36. Boy, that's the way you want to run the option play, isn't it? He waited until the last second to tuck it back in and got those guys, defenders going for the other ball handler and he was able to tuck it in and go for the first down. And this is what the Pirates want to do, move the ball consistently, move the chains down the field, get a nice long drive in there, keep the Pandora offense off the field, and finish with points. That's the biggest thing. Pirates split two wide receivers out left. This time they run it right up the middle with Landon Shuttler. Shuttler picks up a couple on first down. He had 46 yards rushing for two touchdowns last week. Good size to Shuttler, 5'11", 165. Right now, the Pirates have definitely got Pandora's defense guessing on what, where the ball is going to go next. Same formation for the Pirates. Shuttler goes in motion. They thought about passing it to him. This time they go out deep to the right and overthrows the receiver, Dirth. So third down coming up, about seven yards to go. Not a bad play there. I mean, he just kind of led the receiver a little bit too much, but you know, it, you know, that's the kind of play you want. You know, you're, you're looking at third and seven now, but on a second down play, I throw that one every time. Now the Rockets can figure it, but you can't really figure on a pass again, not with a quarterback like Bogart, who likes to run the ball too. They split two wide receivers out to the left, Earth at the top of the screen. Shuttler lined up behind Bogart. Bogart sends it out wide. This one's caught, and it looks like another first down. This time, it's Gavin Bogart, so the twin connection there for the Pirates. And it looks like we have a flag on the field. Bogart was on the turf. Flag down at the 38-yard line. As it stands, it's good for a Citizens National Bank first down. We'll have to see what the referees have to say here. They're confirmed there. They're going against Pandora, I think. The Pirates seem to think so as well as they're not really walking back toward the original line of scrimmage. It's a personal foul. Oh, they call it against Bluffton and Pandora, I believe. They pointed both directions. Yeah, they did. But they still marked it off <clears throat> against the Rockets. That's a big penalty, too, because that puts them the, the Pirates down there in the inside the 10 yard line almost. It looks like it's sitting right on the 10 right now. So perhaps he was just pointing at the flag because the penalty is officially against the Rockets. So first down and goal for the Pirates from the 10 as Dar said. In motion goes Bogart. 
And we've got a fumble. And this might be rocket football. Little miscommunication yep. in the backfield. And up with it comes Mitchell Blank. And these teams turn wow. trading turnovers to start this game. That one's huge when you got the ball on the 10 yard line and first down and then you turn it over and give it back to the Rockets, man. That's a big moral boost for, for Pandora right now. It certainly looked like there was some miscommunication in the backfield. They had one guy in motion, two guys running into each other right at the snap. So the Rockets avoid danger and they'll start from the 12 yard line. They need to move it down there though. They need to get out of that the shadow of their goal line back here. Meyer takes the snap, keeps it on the ground. Lugerville picks up about three or four yards on first down. Yeah, Lugerville, like I said, had 101 yards last week, averaging about almost six yards a carry. So he's a dangerous runner if he can get through that line. And then, you know, they don't throw him a whole lot around the ends. They run him pretty much off tackle, but once he gets through that those holes, boy, he's gone. Picked up six, so second down four coming up. Marco Iden on the tackle for the Pirates. They'll keep it on the ground with Lugaville. Makes another nice cut. He's got enough for the first down as he crosses the 25. I'll tell you what, like I said, you, you, you run that young man, he's a strong. We got somebody down there on the field. Might be cramping though. You see that often, week one, week two, hot nights. See what happens, but as the training staff takes a look at the injured player, we'll step aside. It's still 0-0 on the Web Insurance scoreboard, 8.53 to go first quarter. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Our scoreboard is made possible by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. We welcome you back to Pandora Gilboa. The injured pirate was Wyatt Lovell, who's helped off the field and back underway. Still 0-0 on that Web Insurance scoreboard. Each team with one possession and each team with one turnover as the Rockets have a first down. Meyer rolling out to his left. He's going to look to pass. Big block as oh, that nice one's catch. caught. Colin Harris with the grab. Colin Harris with nine catches last week for 90 yards. That one goes for about 13. And another CNB first down. Well, that was a nice pass by Meyer, too, just to get hit in that crowd. There was a lot of guys around that receiver, and he was able to throw it on the run. How about the block there from Ethan Lugaville oh, as well? Always love it when your running back can lower that shoulder and knock one over. Well, Lukeville's a senior, six foot, 210 pounds. So he's a load out there for those guys. Lukeville lined up right behind Meyer. Two wide receivers split out right. Meyer looking to pass once again. He's rushed from the backside. Floats one up right, and that one's oh. gonna be caught. That's nice Aiden. adjustment Aiden there Morris. by Aiden Morris. That ball was up there a long time too. And Morris had time to get out there. Defensive back was watching it the whole way as well, but it was just over his head. And a big, big gain of Citizens National Bank first down all the way up to the Pirate 33-yard line. Well, Meyer last week, 21 for 33 passing, you know, for 220 yards, hit about 64% of his passes. Keep this one on the ground to the right side with Lugabil, and he finds the corner and picks up a nice gain on first down. Looks like they've got him for about eight or nine. Ethan Luganville looking nice. We saw him plenty last year in this matchup. In fact, when these two teams played each other last year, it was a game that was almost won by Pandora on a last yep. second field goal, but it fell just short and went into overtime and the Pirates were able to win that one. Second down two. Pirates with three down linemen. Meyer wants to pass, throws that one a little comeback route, that's caught. And some good footwork there by Aiden Morris. Nice route run there by Aiden Morris too. Just went out there, kind of found his little hole right there in, among the defenders and just turned around right there and Meyer was able to find him. 
all the way down to the three yard line. Actually, the scoreboard says the three, but that looks like the seven yard line there, they correct it. Got the sun directly in our line of sight. That'll go down shortly behind the trees as Lugabel goes close to the goal oh. line and he is in. Our first score of the ball game goes to the Rockets on a seven yard touchdown scamper by Ethan Luganville and a PAT pending. And again, that was Luganville just lowering his shoulder and just barreling right into the defensive, defensive back and just knocking him back into the end zone. 7.25 on the clock, 6-0 on the Web Insurance scoreboard and out comes Suter for the PAT. Yeah, Suter three for three last week. We remember this young man from last year. He's got quite the leg. And that field goal that fell short that we mentioned was really held up by the sun. It looked like it had the trajectory to go in as that one splits the uprights and the Rockets lead seven to zero as we step aside. Stay tuned, more coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's first downs are presented by Citizens National Bank. See how we are building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. We welcome you back to Pandora Gilboa High School where the Rockets have put the first score of the game on the board. After a seven yard touchdown run from Ethan Luganbill, Evan Skilleter and Dar Nevergal with you tonight. As Suter kicks this one off. This one will be returned by the Pirates from about the five yard line. And they get to right around the 20, and the Pirates, who looked good on their first drive, Dar, and came up empty. They'll come back out trying to avoid turnovers and tie up the score. Yeah, they, they certainly did, they, just the fumble. They moved it down to the 10-yard line and then fumbled the ball. But you know this Rocket team on that first drive, they had nice mix of the run and the pass on the drive to get it all the way down there for a score. So let's see how Bluffton's going to respond to that. You know, like I said, they won 67-7 against Corey Rossin last week. Now they're down seven to nothing, you know, right off the bat. So let's see what they can do. Pirates right. back in that shotgun set with three wide receivers split out left. Man in motion, that's Ethan Lug, or excuse me, not Ethan Luganbill, but the ball pitched out to Griffin Stackhouse. And Stackhouse with a nice little pickup. The refs blew that Another, dead. Yeah. The ball came out, but the whistle blue before anyone jumped on top. I'm sorry, the man in motion was Gavin Bogart, the opposite 21 from Ethan Luganville. It's a nice play on that one there for Bluffton too, a little pitch out to the outside. This Rocket team gave up 308 and 363 total yards last week against uh, Columbus Grove, but they've really looked impressive on defense so far in this particular drive. So pickup of seven, second and three. The Pirates are going to go deep. It's going to be a jump ball. Dirth goes up and makes the catch. Definitely a size advantage for Hayden Dirth as he brings that down for the big gain and the Citizens National Bank first down. And a great pass out there again by, you know, Garrett Bogart. I mean, he laid it out there. That's similar to the pass that Meyer threw for a first down as well earlier on. And Bogart just laid it out there, and you're right, Evan. There was just... Dirth just went up there and just pulled it off the top of the defender. It was Carson Meyer out there in defense. Meyer listed at 5'10", Dirth at 6'3". So a big difference there as Bogart has to pull it down. Bogart could just throw it away, but instead holds on and takes the sack, make it a seven yard loss and a big play for the Rockets. It's like number 18, I think, in on the tackle on that one. That would be Aiden Miller. So it is a loss of seven, second down 17 coming up. And I'm sure Coach Rickert, Richards, excuse me, will have a, a chat with Bogart about just throwing that ball away next time. Yeah, there were two or three defenders, you know, on the hot on his trail. Ooh. And a nice pitch outside by Bogart and a nice pickup right there. Gavin Bogart gets back the yards lost and then some and makes a third down much more manageable. And Bogart took a took a punishment on that one there. Ethan Lukerville just leveled him just before the, you know, the pitch. 
And you know what? If you're going to run an option, you're going to have to tell your quarterback, look, you're going to get smacked multiple times in the game. And that one's certainly a big hit. That's the second time we've seen Luganville with a big hit. Well, particularly if you're going to hang on to it as long as Bogart's hanging on to it before he makes that pitch. So that gain makes it third down and six. And they're going to run a little counter play. It's still going to be Bogart. And this is a big play down the right side. And the Pirates are into the end zone for the score. Gavin Bogart with the big play. And the Pirates are a PAT away from tying this up. Well, that was a great play by the Buffalo Pirates, too. You know, a little misdirection there for him, and they were able to get him around the outside. And he just took off down that right sideline, and nobody could catch up to him. The Pirates will line up for the extra point. Kyle Basil once again out to do the kicking for the Pirates. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is good. 7-7 the score, 450 remaining in the first quarter. We'll step aside. More coming up after the break on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Wishing the best of luck to both teams tonight. Both teams tied at seven. Dar after a nice little counter play for the Pirates resulted in a 35 yard touchdown run. Yeah, a lot of explosive plays in this game so far and a lot of long passes and long runs. This one returned up near the 30 yard line. Zayden Morris as the Rockets will take over. And Morris is such a dangerous return man too. You gotta keep an eye on him once he gets the ball back here. He likes to pick his way through the lines, find those in openings. The drive will start officially from the 29 yard line. Sun finally dropped behind those trees out there. Makes a world of difference. Oh, it really does. Again, like we said, beautiful, beautiful night for football. Two in a row, knock yep. on Hey, wood. there you go. Often run into storms or some kind of bad weather as this one will be run by Luganville up the left side. Picks up a couple on first down. Brought down by a host of Pirate tacklers. Well, I'll tell you what, Lucaville has got all the confidence in the world in his offensive line out there. He run, He's run off those tackles. And you're looking at Braden Hagemeyer, Mitchell Blank, Eli Lucaville, Seth Corral, and Dylan Finberg along that line. And he's just fine in the holes either on the right side or left side. Pickup was four yards, second down six. Man goes in motion. That's Andrew Miller. And to the right side this time for Lugabill. He's met in the backfield. Still able to fall forward for positive yardage. Picks up about two. So a second and, or excuse me, a third and four coming up. Good job by the Pirates getting into the backfield. Nowhere Bricker, the first one back there. Yeah, Bricker, if we get back there, that was Marco Iden, I think, that made the tackle. It's all important for those guys when they're on the pursuit like that to have the guy in the front staying where he's supposed to be at and you know, and just you know slowing that runner down. Big third down coming up as the Rockets split three guys out to the left. Meyer rolling that way, looking to pass, and that oh. ball comes out. Who falls on it? Looks like the Rockets might have gotten it, but the Pirates disagree. Referee signal, still no signal. Go the thinks Pirates. they have it, and yep. they do. Another turnover. Number 33 out there coming up with the ball for Bluffton. That would be uh, Cameron, Col was it Coughlin? Not sure who picked it up. It looked like Bogart, or excuse me, looked like Meyer was just about to throw that football before he was hit. Ball pops out. Pirates take over from the 26-yard line of the Rockets. Three turnovers total so wow. far already. Not even through the first quarter. A lot of hard hitting out there. They're going to throw another jump ball. It worked last time. This time out of reach of the target. Good coverage by Meyer once again. 
second and ten coming up. And why not? Uh, why not <laughs> throw it up for a guy that gives up or that has five inches on his defender? And can jump, too. I mean, it's not just having that, that height advantage. You'll be able to get off the ground as well. You just lay it up there along that line. That time he was a little bit too close to that sideline, just a little bit over it. But I'll tell you what, I'd do that one all night long. Bogart up to the left, has a nice hole, and picks up positive yardage. Actually picks up about nine yards. Nice open tackle there by Aiden Morris. But again, what the Pirates want to do, move the ball consistently. They're making advantage of a turnover to get the ball in good field position. Now, they, now let's just move it consistently down there and get a score. Third down two for the Pirates, nearing the two and a half minute mark of the first quarter. Bogart goes under center. He'll pitch this out to Shuttler. And Shuttler tripped up. What a play there by Mr. Ethan Luganville. Well, he's been in there a lot in that backfield. He's shooting the gaps and getting in there, and this time it paid off for him. And now the Pirates, looks like they're gonna kick a field goal here as they switch units. Fourth down and five. Ball sitting at the 21 yard line, so a field goal would be about 38 yards out. Kyle Basil. Will line it up from the 28-yard line. So 38-yard attempt for the Pirates. Kick is up, and it is well right. It had the distance, but no good, and the score remains 7-7, seven to seven, so the turnover doesn't hurt the Rockets. And they'll come back out and try to clean things up. Yeah, big play by Luca Bill, you know, stopped this drive for the, for the Pirates on this one here. But, you know, again... Now you got to respond if you're the Rockets. You know, you, you give up the ball, you stop them from, from getting down there and scoring, they miss the field goal. Now you've got to come back and you got to respond and you got to score and you got to hang on to that ball. And I, I know there's a lot of hard hitting out there and it's early in the season and stuff, but you got to hold on to that. You can't have these turnovers. The Rockets will split wide receivers out either direction. Give it to Luganville on the right side. Luganville with a nice hole. Luganville trying to get to the outside. Oh and look at that run as he stays <laughs> on his feet and nears the 40-yard line, enough for a Citizens National Bank first down and plenty more. He is so strong. And when he got out there, you saw the stiff arm he put on the defender just knocked him down. I mean, he is a, a strong, you know, gutsy runner when he's got the ball. He gets up to the 38-yard line, so a nice pickup. And a first down for the Rockets. Well, this Pandora Gilboa team finished you know, last year with a six and four record. They missed the playoffs. They finished 17th in the playoffs out of six when they needed to be in the 16th spot. Now keep this one on the ground on the left side. That's Andrew Miller with his first carry of the night. Miller picks up four on first down. So they've had some tough luck in the last, you know, couple playoff times, you know, well, 2020 didn't really matter, but when you look at the last couple times they've been in the playoffs, they've just missed the playoffs by one position, you know. But they finished six and two in the in the uh, BBC last year, so they are a team that can really move the ball. Absolutely. Pickup was four yards, so second down six for the Rockets. Two running backs in the backfield. They'll hand this one to Lugan Bill, and he's got a nice lead block, but the Pirates able to stop him at the line of scrimmage. And the whistle blew before the ball came out. So it's a pickup of four yards and a third and short coming up. Now that's one thing Lucaville's got to be careful of is, you know, fighting for extra yards because the ball, it was blown dead, but it did come out of that. When you get in that little scrub with the, you know, in the middle like that, you got to be careful to hang on to that football. And it looks like the Pirates will take their first time out of the half to talk this one over. A third and one coming up when we return. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is made possible by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Welcome back for a third and one. Just over 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Score at 7-7 on that Webb Insurance scoreboard. Meyer takes the snap, it's a bit low. They get it to Luganville. He's got some work oh, to do, but that. he is still on his feet. Breaks a bunch of tackles as he crosses into Pirate territory and another Citizens National Bank first down. 
What a horse, I'll tell you what. He just barreled right into that group. And, you know, everybody thought, I got him. No, I got him. No, I got him. No, no, none of us got him. You know, he is so strong going through there. And what looked like a fourth down coming up yeah. turns out to be a gain of about 20 yards. Pirates lucky he didn't break free he for a touchdown He there. almost did. Eight seconds left. Looks like the Rockets will run one more play. Meyer's going to look to pass this one. Meyer rolls out, tries to throw, and it's ruled incomplete as he was able to throw that one. A little bit underhanded, but nonetheless, a forward pass, and it'll bring up second and 10 and the end of our first quarter of action. 7-7, seven to seven, your score, Bluffton, Pandora, tied. We will step aside second quarter coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's first downs are presented by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Second quarter about to begin here at Pandora High School. 7-7, these two teams locked up as that pass is low and another one that just gets forward. Whoa, so that was close. Rockets escaping twice now. Two plays in a row as it brings up third down and 10. I'll tell you what, Evan, there was a lot of action in that first quarter just to have the score 7-7. Seven to seven. I mean, there was a lot of big plays. There was three turnovers in that first quarter. I mean, a missed field goal attempt. I mean, there was a lot of things that went on in that quarter and only 14 points scored. Rockets trying to change that, but some work to do on third down. So they split four wide receivers to either direction. Meyer looking to pass, has a man oh, wide, wide open over the middle. And that's caught by Aiden Morris. And Morris oh. rumbling down to the five-yard line and enough for the Citizens National Bank. First down, first and goal coming up for the Rockets. Well, Aiden Morton, Morris taking a page out of the book of, uh, you know, Lukeville. You know, let's just keep running, keep your legs moving, keep going north and south, and, you know, we'll drag anybody with us we can. There was not a single Pirate defender in the middle of the field nope, right there. not right there. They're nice hole in the middle there. They've had that play a couple times now where Morris has been open in that middle. Rockets knocking on the door of regaining this lead. Meyer takes the snap. He's going to keep this one himself. He's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that play. Yeah, good defense by the Pirates on that one to shut down that middle. Slow to get up. That was Cameron Coughlin. Looking at a second and four now for the Rockets. A lot of things you can do on second and four. You are inside the uh, five yard line. Meyer hands this one to Luganville, and he's got Goodbye. enough space as he walks into the end zone for the Rocket touchdown. This time a four yard run for Luganville. Suter will come on for the PAT. As the Rockets up 13 to seven as it stands currently. Luganville with his second touchdown run of the day. Had three touchdown runs last week. So five already on this young season as Suter puts this one up and through the uprights. 14-7 the score as the Rockets get the first score of the second quarter. We step aside. More coming up after this on WOSA. Tonight's premier sponsor is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Wishing the best of luck to both teams tonight. 14-7 the Rockets on top after another touchdown run from Ethan Luganville. Now the Rockets kick this one deep. Bluffton will return with Noah Bricker as he goes from right to left, looking for some space. Now finds a little seam as he crosses the 20-yard line. About 15 yards on that return by Bricker, or Burkholder. So the ball will officially be spotted at the 23-yard line where the Pirates will take over. Pirates coming up empty on their last drive with a missed field goal from 38 yards out. One that certainly had the distance, just snuck a little bit too far right. 
Yeah, two good kickers out there, you know, one for the Rockets as well, and Elon Suter. So you can expect these teams not to hesitate to, you know, run their kickers out there. Landon Shuttler will start with this one on the ground. Falls forward for positive yardage, but not much. Looks like they'll give him about a yard, so a second and nine coming up. Ran right into Mitchell Blank, and I'm not sure I'd want to do that. <laughs> Senior six foot, 200 pounds. So with that second and nine comes a spread formation. Three wide receivers out to the right. Bogart throws this one, has a man, that's caught. Complete to Braden Jordan, and Jordan's got enough for a Citizens National Bank first down. Across the 40-yard line up to about the 42 or 43. They place it at the 43. Nice play there by Bluffton. They just, you know, sent three receivers right and flooded that whole area right there. So he has pick of any three of them. And I don't know if that was his primary one or you just throwing it in the middle there and so one of you guys catch it. Now the flip the formation, three wide receivers out to the left. A man in motion, that's Gavin Bogart. He'll throw it out to the left side as Griffin Stackhouse makes the catch and is met shortly after, picks up one yard. I can tell you, Evan, when it comes to practice this week, the, the thing was is, Luca Bill, you're, guy, you're going right for the, uh, the quarterback. I don't care yeah. what anything else. What he does with the ball, you're going to get him, and he's done it every time. And if it doesn't seem like it's effective, Talk to us in oh. the third and fourth quarter after Bogart's taken many, many hits and starts to think twice about allowing himself yeah. to take those hits. I mean, he's gotten in there and just hammered Bogart every time. And this time Bogart brought down after a short gain, might have picked up a few inches. Is that Wyatt Russell out there? Look like Wyatt Russell on that tackle. And they put it down right at the line of scrimmage, so no gain officially. And a third down nine coming up. Yeah, Russell with 10 tackles last week against Columbus Grove. It's a big third and nine now. Ball at the 44 yard line of the Pirates. Taking their time, letting the play clock run. It's down to five seconds. Down to two. And now Bluffin will take a timeout to talk this one over. We'll step aside as well. 8.20 to go, second quarter, 14-7, Pandora on top. Third down and nine for the Pirates. 8.20 to go, second quarter of action. Bogart has Shuttler in motion, takes the snap. Looking to pass, steps up, and now he's going to take off. Bogart makes a cut up the field. He's going to go down about a yard short. And have to imagine Bluffton will think about going for this one at least as he crosses into Rocket territory. I think you're right, Evan. I think you, you go for it here. Well, you're looking at about two yards now. But uh, They did put know, that a little further back yeah, they than did. anticipated. Now it makes it a little bit tougher, but you know, decide what you want to do. But with this offense that you're running, you know, and you've been able to chew up some yardage. You just haven't been able to put it in the end zone as much, but you've been able to chew up the yardage. So at two, you know, they've got a fourth and one on the scoreboard, but it's more like a fourth and two. Bogart will run out to his left. Bogart up the field. Referee trying to throw a flag. He has it stuck, and now it comes out. It was enough for the first down. That looks the like flag a holding down at the 49. Or... Yeah. Holding against the Pirates, so the first down negated, and fourth and two becomes fourth and 12, and we'll likely see a punt now. And when you got an option quarterback and an option, you know, play calling like that, you know, it makes it tough on the on the linemen and stuff to try to hold their blocks and. You know, because everybody's pursuing and stuff, and so, you know, you're going to get that holding call more often than not. They run Kyle Basil out to do the kicking, or the punting as well. Whoa. Snap a bit high, but he's able to bring it down, and a nice kick, as that will take a pirate bounce. 
and all the way down to the 22 yard line, maybe the 23. A flag down though, and they're gonna call a hold against the Pirates. So a chance that this one is kicked again. We'll see what they end up doing. We're gonna talk about it here. I think the Rock is gonna let it bounce. Referee talking with Coach Jeff Richards on the far side. Two great guys coaching both these oh, teams, yes, by the are. way. Love Jeff Richards and what he's done with this program. Matt Hershey has done a fantastic job here at Pandora. Both are very pleasant guys to talk to, really care about their programs. So it's a hold against the Pirates. They'll back it all the way up, and they will punch this one again. And this is good for the Rockets because that last one almost sailed over his head. You know, it, it, it take this chance again that it might happen this time. So Basil this time will punt from the five yard line. If nothing else, Aiden Morris is going to catch it in good field position. This snaps good. This kicks away. End over end once again. Takes a pirate hop and it will end up at the 39. So. Oh, what'd we say, 25 yard line before, so about a 15 yard difference. Yep. So it ends up being good for the Rockets, but not a huge detriment to the Pirates as Pandora offense will come back out. A smart move by the Pirates though to kick it away from Aiden Morris on that one there. Now let's see if the Rockets can come out and sustain a long drive and keep uh, Bluffton off the field for a while. Wear down this defense for the Pirates. First down in 10, two wide receivers split out left of Meyer. Luganville lined up behind and he'll get the carry on first down. Met at the line of scrimmage and no gain on that play. That battle for the line of scrimmage has been fun to watch tonight. Two really good lines and two teams that really like to run the football as we've got another injured player at the 6.54 mark. We'll step aside as he's taken care of. 14-7 Pandora on top on WOSN. Welcome back to Pandora Gilboa High School. The injured pirate Gavin Bogart walks off the field under his own power. Second down 10 coming up after a Run for no gain by Ethan Luganville. This time a little hot pass and a nice job oh, by nice the Pirates job. wrapping him up in the backfield. That's Braden Jordan back there, but a flag comes in. Is Tanner Leakty the ball carrier, technically the receiver on that play? But we'll see what this penalty is. And it's a personal foul against the Pirates, so that's a big one. They, third down and 13 becomes a first down, and that ball will be into Pirate territory. Yeah, that's a huge penalty. The Pirates were penalized 12 times last week for just 40 yards, but, you know, that was a big one right there on a personal foul. So ball just across midfield to the Pirate 49. And a first down. Meyer will line up in the shotgun once again. Two wide receivers split out wide right. They'll look to pass. Still looking, come back route. Oh, and nice that's job. a great catch right there by Aiden Morris. But you talk about the catch. Guard, that pass was perfect. It was exactly the only where place it needed you could to put be. It. Yep. And again, that hole in the middle there, just in the, uh, the defensive back got in there quickly on this one, one here. But that's a spot that you know they've been using all night long. That's the third time now, at least three times now, that they've used that spot right there for Aiden Morris. Citizens National Bank first down as the ball down to the 38-yard line. They'll line up with two wide receivers in the backfield. Or excuse me, two runners in the backfield. That'll be Luganville. No, pardon me, that's not Luganville. That's Andrew Miller who runs it to the left side and picks up a few. Yeah, Andrew Miller, only a sophomore, 5'11", 200 pounds. So a couple good, pretty good running backs back there and pretty good sized ones too. 
Pickup of three on that play, so a second and seven here for the Rockets. Good three yards on first down, though. I mean, you know, just kind of soften up that line again for uh, the Pirates. Keep them honest on that one there. And Meyer, quick pass out to the right side. Luganville makes the catch. Luganville makes a guy miss, still on his feet, and another CNB first down, down to the 22-yard line. What's impressive about Lucaville is the fact that you, on that one there you saw, he turned, caught the ball, but still had presence of mind to know where the holes were at after he caught it. I mean, he was able to turn around and kind of pick his way right through to get that, you know, the first down. But, you know, that's tough to do when you're turned around looking at the quarterback, not knowing exactly where the defensive backs were, but he knew where he wanted to go. Luganville having a great night. Two touchdowns already. First down. Meyer rolling to his left. Meyer throwing this one oh. and right to the Pirates as it's intercepted. Quinn Eaches with the grab. And the Pirates with the big takeaway. And they'll have five minutes and 16 seconds to try to tie it up before the half. I guess what, third turnover now for the Rockets here in the first half? One for the Pirates. Well, that was drastically underthrown, you know, from the receiver. The receiver is probably another eight yards away from it. It's one of those where you just sit there and say, oh, the ball's coming to me. Yeah. You're wide. I mean, worst thing is, is don't overthink it and miss it. <laughs> and some issues right now. They move the ball up a couple yards. So they'll start from the 20-yard line rather than the 18. Bogart has a man in motion. Bogart keeps it. Bogart this time will work his way up the left side, and a flag comes in. And the Pirates have been hit with a lot of penalties yep. today. Might have another hold right there. Referees trying to sort this one out as well. Yep, another hold. And again, I always talk about that when you got an option quarterback and he's running around back here, it's hard for the guys not to have the holds put on it, you know. They're trying to keep their positions, trying to keep their assignments, but you know, it's kind of tough to do when the guy's running around back there. So first down and 18 after the holding penalty. This time they'll run a jet sweep. That's Gavin Bogart. Gavin was injured earlier, walked off the field, and now good to see him back in the game, but that play doesn't go very far at all. Yeah, good open field tackle. I didn't catch who did it out there, but Nice open field tackle on that left side. Sounds like it was Colin Harris on the tackle. No gain on the play, second down, 18. Pirates gotta get out of this hole. Well, I was just gonna say, they certainly like to score and get out of this hole, but if nothing else, they were able to stop that nice drive from the Rockets as this one goes up over the top. And how about the pitch and catch there? as Braden Jordan brings it down, catches it in stride, a perfectly placed ball from Garrett Bogart and another Citizens National Bank first down. Just like we drew it up in practice. You know, just right over the middle, right into his hands. All the way up to the 41 yard line. And just like that, they do get out of the hole. They certainly did. And that was a nice play all the way around. It just showed how far he can throw it out there too. Yeah, they made you know, a nice little drive going on this one. Bogart might try to pass this one too. Bogart goes down and falls forward for a few yards. And that's what's good about rolling out is oftentimes if you're going to get hit and brought down, you're able to go forward and at least get something. Yeah, that was uh, Mitchell Blank again on the tackle. He picked up one yard on that one there. So second and nine. Three minutes 
34 seconds. Pirates with just one timeout. They've already used two this half. They're going to have to go downfield on one of these plays here. Play clock down to seven. Bogart hands this one to Shuttler, and a flag comes out, and we're going to have a false start. He's working this one out too, but since they blew it dead, ball start against the Pirates, 10 yard penalty. So forget second and nine, it'll be second and 19. Pirates just can't get out of their um, own way. They're shooting themselves in the foot every chance they get right now. And they get a nice gain, they get a nice yardage on one play, and the next play they run back the other way. That would have been a nice gain on that play, too, because the way it was developing out. See Pirate fans on the opposite side of us standing up because they thought it'd be a touchdown. They didn't hear the whistle. And I thought, why is Rocket giving up on him? <laughs> <laughs> so second 19, Shuttler with a, some space up the middle. Pardon me, that was second and 14. That was only a five yard penalty. Still early in the year for me, trying to get yep. this all sorted out. It's all right, it's all right. He got that back in a little bit more. So he picks up about eight yards, third and six coming up for the Pirates, under three minutes to go. It's a manageable third and six for the Pirates. Dirt split out here all alone to the right. And they are going to look for oh, him, but the ball it. slipped out of Bogart's hand as he went to throw it. They did want to go for that jump yes, ball to Dirth. He was right there, too. And now a fourth and long coming up. Well, he looked towards the middle like he has every time on that particular play, but you knew where he was going to go with it the whole time, but it just slipped right out of his hands. Tough break for, for Bluff on that one. So the loss... Brings up a fourth down and 12 as Basil comes back out to punt this one away. Aiden Morris and Colin Harris back to return. Takes a hop and that one touched Harris, but he's able to pick it up and the Rockets will have a minute and 53 seconds with three timeouts to try to get some points before the half. Yeah, and I think, you know, if you're if you're bluffing, you know you just want to make sure they don't get that big long play. You have to play back a little bit on your defensive backs and stuff. If you're if the Rockets, hey, you know you can work around there, get around midfield, and they may try to go for that long strike. It's a lot of time, a minute and 53 seconds. Ball at the 31-yard line. And you see the defensive backs dropping back a little bit for the Pirates. And the flag comes out. And a false start. start against the Rockets. So back them up five yards, first and 15 now. Meyer last week, Dar mentioned it earlier, 21 of 33 for 220 yards. He did throw three interceptions. Has one of those tonight. Three wide receivers out to the left. That's against a good, very, very good Columbus Grove team. And they'll toss this one up as they set up a screen. It's complete to Aiden Morris. Morris working to the outside, and Morris picks up about 14 yards, he needed 15 for a first down, but nonetheless, that's a great oh, pickup. Oh, that was. And again, you know, showing that, you know his ability out there as a receiver to pick it and pick him his way through the line as well. I mean, he got to the outside there, knew he you know had to get around a couple of defenders, was able to do that. Just kind of took it down that right or left sideline. Very smart playing out there. Rockets went out of bounds on that play, so the clock stops at 140. Play clock's at 15. So they send a play in. Meyer wants to throw, throws this one, and it's caught. And a good catch at that. Aiden Morris got hit as soon as he caught that ball, but he was able to hang on. Good quick coverage there by Quinn Eaches. 
They're but enough up. for the Citizens National Bank first down. Hurry up offense by the Rockets. Hurried to the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to switch it up a bit. Coaches get the play in. Meyer throws this oh, one. Look out. And look that out. Might look out. Go for a touchdown. Look out, look we'll out. see it's a foot race and brought down inside the 10 yard line. A Pirate defender fell around the 35 or 40, and that allowed Colin, Colin Harris. Harris to get loose and get inside the 10. Wow, and that was, then it was a foot race after that. Was that number nine that put him down? It a, was. Quinn each is able to catch up and bring him down. Well, they got around midfield, and they went for the strike, and they got it. Tough break by the Pirates, though. Defender to you know, fall down out there. Now they're definitely within field goal range of uh, Suter, that's for sure. They'll hand this one to Lugan Bill. And he's wrapped up, but breaks the tackle and gets oh, into man. the end zone for yet another touchdown. <laughs> he Make is it so three strong. For Mr. Luganville. And the Rockets tack on another score. The nine yard run that time. All his touchdown runs have been inside 10 yards as we've got an injured player on the ground. And looks like he needs to get stretched out. Matter of fact, we have two on the ground as we. Step aside, 20 to 7, with a PAT pending after the break. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Pandora High School. 20 to 7, the score after a nine yard touchdown run from Ethan Luganville, his third of the game. The Rockets will try to tack on one more here. As Elam Suter lines up the PAT, that one is up, and it is good. 21 to seven now the score, 46 seconds left. And I'll tell you what, 21 to seven, two score lead for the Rockets. But the Pirates really haven't seemed outmatched. They just keep making these errors that stall drives, and, and they've been hit with a lot of penalties in this one as well. But I certainly wouldn't go into the locker room feeling like it's out of reach. No, I wouldn't either. And, you know, they've been their own worst enemy, like you said, Dave. And they, you know, their penalties, you know, they haven't been able to take advantage of the miscues by the Rockets so far in this first half. You know, they've had opportunities. They just let them slip away, but mostly because of the penalties. And, they, and the, you know, they had a good drive going. They end up with a you know, penalty to pull them back, you know, those kind of things. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't be, you know, if I were the coaching staff for Bluffton, I would go into the locker room saying, you know, hey, guys, you know, all we got to do is just clean up our act a little bit, come back out here, you know, play our good defense, you know, and, and you know, we're back in this game. You know, if they come back out and, and they'll get a score right off the bat, you know, they're back in it, you know. But I'll tell you what, on Lukeville in that last touchdown run, somebody tried to hit him right around the, the, the pad side on his, uh, just below his thigh. Big mistake. Yeah. Big mistake. You know, that kid's got tree trunks for legs. He was you're wrapped not, up. Oh, yeah, you're yes. not going to knock him down. You, you know, it's going to take a couple guys to do it, but you're not going to hit him. If you hit him on that pads on his, uh, just below his thigh, forget it. Absolutely. Luganville now with six touchdowns in two games. Make it six touchdowns in six quarters of football as this one is kicked off by Suter. And it will roll into the end zone. So the ball comes out, the Pirates still with one timeout, 46 seconds remaining. They haven't passed the ball too terribly poorly. You know, they, they have had Hayden Durth with a size advantage, usually on an island, and he's certainly someone I would go to if I'm trying to get a big play. Oh, certainly, and, and you know, they were gonna try it on that one play, you know, but they just, you know, he dropped the ball, quarterback, you know, missed, you know, just let it slip out of his hands. But I would go back to that play. They should have gone back to that play more often than that because he can out jump whoever's defending him out there for the Rockets. So go back over the, that sideline. You know, if nothing else, you're going to stop the clock if he catch, catches it and takes it out of bounds. Now the question is, what do you do if you're the Buffalo Pirates coaching staff? Do you just run this out, which kind of looks like a little bit, or do you try to go for something? Well, they'll keep it on the ground here as Shuttler picks up a couple on first down. And they don't call a timeout. You have to imagine they are content heading into the locker room. They don't have to run another play. 
And you don't want to make a mistake and give the ball back to the Rockets right here. Pandora still with three timeouts. Bogart runs out to the left, throws this one. It's incomplete. Clock stops at 19. So third down, seven. Now, the question becomes, like you said, you want to pass this ball and risk an incompletion and kicking it back to the Rockets? Do you feel like it matters? It is one of those things that makes me glad I'm not a head coach. <laughs> Yeah, because you could you could try to lull the, the Rockets to sleep, thinking you're not going to go for go deep on this one here. You know, with only 19 seconds left, you can't. You know, you got to drop your defensive backs back there just in case. You know. Bogart pitches this one out to Shuttler. He's wrapped Ooh. up in the backfield. He goes down, and Pandora will take a quick timeout at 14 seconds. So, so the they'll Rockets get the want ball it back. back. <laughs> They want the ball. Hey, season 18 of Sports Report started last Friday night. Every Friday you can join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around. All season long Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Pirates, if you're just joining us, winning last week. 67 to 7 against Corey Rawson. Pandora falling to Columbus Grove 34 to 23. And as we said in that one there, the Rockets scored almost all their points. I think all of their points in the second half of that game. So they were building some momentum in that in that second half and it's carried over into this game a little bit. Much different proponent for the, the Pirates than Corey Rawson was last week, and no doubt about that. And the Rockets learned a lot in the game against Columbus Grove. Because like I said, that's a very good Columbus Grove team. You're going to have a hard fought game. And your quarterback throws three interceptions, but nothing to be ashamed of. And that ball is touched by the Rockets. Could the Pirates get there in time? I think the Rockets got it back, though. Not too sure what's going on on that far side. I think the Rockets will retain possession. And Bluffin trying to get the ball away from him, but he held on to it. Six seconds left, two timeouts. I just heard a Rockets coach say field goal team ready. So they might try to set up Suter, who has a great leg. Not too much of a breeze tonight. So you can throw one over the middle here, pick up a decent chunk of yards and call a timeout. If you get it down to the you know, the 25 yard line, that's a 35 yard attempt by Suter. I think, you know, he's got plenty of leg to do that. And they throw this oh. one, it's intercepted. Now a chance for the Pirates to have a big return. Braden Jordan still on his feet. And the clock hits zero as he crosses the 45. And no flags on the field, so that will do it. For the first half of action, 21 to seven. Rockets on top as both teams head to the locker room. We'll take a break as well. Second half coming up after this on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is made possible by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Welcome back to Pandora Gilboa High School. It's 21-7, Pandora on top. Three rushing touchdowns for Ethan Luganbill and Dar. What a half the young man had. He certainly did. 14 carries unofficially for 102 yards, three touchdowns, and all of them within 10 yards, but you know, He's the go-to guy for this Pandora Gilbo team. He sets up the passing game. He sets up everything back here, and he is a tough guy to bring down. You know, and early when you look at that first half, you know it was it was opportunities, and Bluffton had opportunities. They didn't cash in. Pandora Gilbo got the opportunities. They cashed in. You now that's why you got a 21 to seven score. But we talked about at the end of the first half. You know, Bluffton has nothing to you know we're, you know hang their hat on right now, but. You're not out of this game. You know, I mean, you know, it's 21-7. You're getting the ball. If you score on this drive here, you're back right back in it again. You know, you just got to quit shooting yourself in the foot with penalties and turnovers or anything like that. This one will be returned from the five-yard line. Bluffton 
wearing the white uniforms in Bluffton with a big return to start the half as they cross the 40 yard line and will have great field position to start things off. A great return down that you know, left side, you know, just bursting through the defenders and able to pick up that big, big yardage. Good field position for Bluffton starting out. So the Pirates who haven't scored since the first quarter after a 35 yard touchdown run from Gavin Bogart, looking to put some points on the board and claw into this lead. They'll start in the shotgun with three wide, excuse me, two wide receivers split out to the right side. Shuttler goes in motion. Shuttler's gonna get the pass and he's got a little bit of space, gets a nice block and good strength helps him pick up six yards. A tackle made by Luca Bill on that one too. Not only has he played good offense, he's played good defense as well, but nice gain there by the Pirates. Ethan Luganbill on the tackle, and we talked about his offense. He is quite the defender as well. We've seen a couple big hits from him. Yeah, coming in from that linebacker spot of his, and he's really uh, harassed the quarterback for you know Garrett Bogart all night long. Second down four. Keep it on the ground with Shuttler. Makes a shuffle step, has some space, and he has enough for the Citizens National Bank first down as he crosses the Rocket 45 up to the 43. That's a good play there by Bluffton because you saw the defenders for uh, Pandora Gilboa kind of over pursuing on the inside. and They kind of shot right back past the running back and he was able to slide right through there. It's nice to be aggressive, but you got to be careful sometimes too because they, you know make you pay for it. Shuttler goes in motion once again, Bogart takes the snap, passes out, so they basically run the same play they ran two plays ago, but this time to the left, and Shuttler picks up a few. And what people don't, you know, when you're watching that play develop, what you're not really watching is the guy for the Bluff Pirates that sealed off that defender, because that's a dangerous pass if you throw it out there in a the flat like that, and that defender is open and able to pick it off, because, but that guy was able to seal him off, keep him out of the play so you can complete that pass. Now the run a little counter as Bogart can't find any space. Picks up a few. And forward progress gets him about two yards. That's Mitchell Blank jumping around out there, you know, getting everybody fired up on that one. They just kind of push the running back back. So the ball up to the 40 yard line brings up a third down and seven. Big play for the Pirates. They need to convert this and keep this drive alive here, starting out this second half. Looking to pass, a little comeback route, and that one's knocked away. Pirates wanted pass interference. They thought the defender got there early, but they're not gonna get that call. So a fourth down coming up. That was Aiden Morris on the defense. Pirates gonna go for it here. They're inside PG's territory. They'll split three wide receivers out to the right. Number 17 is the guy you got to watch for on this play right here. Dearth out here on the right side. Pirates throwing this one up over the top. Incomplete. Those are the kind of plays that the Pirates really need to convert. They run, they have these drives that just go for so many yards, but they come up short and it's a turnover on downs. Well, and, and PG knew they had to go downfield with it, you know, and they were all over the quarterback on that play there, just busting through and able to knock the you know, offensive line back and able to get in there. So the Rockets will take over from their own 40 yard line, still good field position to start this drive. Quarterback Carson Meyer back in the shotgun. Luganville lined up right behind him, and Luganville will get the carry. Luganville finding some space to the outside, but a flag comes in. This play will come back as Luganville crosses the Pirate 40-yard line. Flag back at the Pandora 41. Yeah, Luganville, as break. you said, over 100 yards on the ground in the first half alone. Already up to six touchdown runs on the season. Two games in. 
101 yards last week, over 102 yards in the first half. Nice run right there. Unfortunately, it's being called back. So make it first. And 19 as the ball gets set on the Rocket 31. And Pandora only had three penalties last week against Columbus Grove for 19 yards. So well-disciplined team. I mean, not a lot of penalties. They've had a couple costly ones here tonight. Meyer in the gun. As the Rockets look to the sideline for the play. Here's the snap. Meyer rolling right, looking to pass. Still looking, throwing over the top, under his receiver, and it's knocked away. Good coverage there by Griffin Stackhouse, who knocks that one down. Pass intended for Aiden Morris. Yeah, that one was pretty much up for grabs, either one. Just a matter of who's going to try to come down with it. Neither one of them did, but it was a battle for it. So that brings up second down, 19. But a nice play on first down. I mean, you got a first and 19, go for it. Split two wide receivers either direction. Luganbill, big hole oh. on the left side, and he'll pick up a lot of those penalty yards as he crosses the 40-yard line. And we'll have a third down and about nine coming up. Pirates slow to get up. That's 68, Xavier Luganbill. And he's going to go off the field. Replaced by Daniel Fredericks. Third and nine. Actually, it looks like more like a third and eight. Meyer wants to throw. And that one's oh. caught. And they've had that play all night as Colin Harris makes the catch with his fingertips. But I'll tell you what, that seam has been open for them. Usually it's Aiden Morris on that play, finding that hole. This time it's Colin Harris. And two dangerous receivers for this Rocket team. I'll tell you what. You mix those two receivers in with Lucaville back here. This is an offensive weapons out there. It's a Citizens National Bank first down for the Rockets. New set of downs to work with. Have to imagine they'll keep this one on the ground with Luganville. They will. He bounces off one tackler but runs into a host of others. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's just about it. So a second and nine coming up. Make a second and ten. And Carson Meyer is having a nice game, too. I mean, he kind of throws – it doesn't really wind up when he throws it. He just kind of shovels it out there. And it, but, you know, he's very effective with his passing. I was watching him during warm-ups, and he was throwing a good 40 yards downfield. So he does have the strong arm, but he, they're taking advantage of that over-the-middle shot. Meyer wants to throw again, has a man over the top, and that one's caught, broken coverage. Goodbye. And a touchdown for the Rockets. Credit that one to Derek Mag. As Mag goes into the end zone, he sneaks out and just goes out into no man's land. Pirates broken coverage. And the Rockets wide in the gap, 27 to seven with a PAT pending. Why not? And you know, that's one of those tough catches, too, because, you, you know, you see you're wide open out there. The ball's coming down, and all you can think of is, like, I got to catch this. I got to catch this. Elam Suter on for the PAT. Perfect so far this season. That one goes up, and it goes in. 28 to 7, your score, seven and a half minutes to play second quarter. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's first downs are presented by Citizens National Bank. See how we are building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. 28 to seven, the score here as the Rockets capitalize on good field position and complete a 40 yard touchdown pass to Derek Mag for the score. And Dar Bluffton again, hasn't played poorly, but they, 
They're down 21 points. Yeah, and again, they you know they hurt themselves on that drive coming out, opening the, the third quarter, and they really needed to get down there and get a score to get themselves back into this game, but they turned it back over to the Rockets, and the Rockets able to capitalize on it again. Boy, that was a nice play, though, you know, just to get it out there to Mag, who hasn't had, caught any all night long, and that was his first catch. Suter kicks this one out of bounds, so a flag comes out. The Pirates will get the ball at the 35-yard line. A you know, steady diet of Lucaville and, and Morris and, and Harris out there, and all of a sudden you see Derek Mag just come out of nowhere and just all by himself out there in the flat. The Pirates back to work. Haven't really had trouble moving the ball, just problems converting on drives. And Pandora's got to keep a heads up too because this is an explosive Pirate offense in there. You know, they can, they can score quickly. Ball will be placed in the middle of the field. Bogart will line up in the shotgun. Two wide receivers out to the right. He'll keep it on the ground with Shuttler. He sidesteps to his left, picks up two yards. Shuttler, the ball carrier, tackle by Russell. Two yards on the Second down, eight. Very conservative first down play there for the Pirates. Pirates taking their time here as well, still working on getting the play in. Play clock down to 17 as they check their wristbands. Bogart just had not have a lot of time back here to really, he has to get rid of the ball quickly. And Dirth on a comeback route has to jump. That one goes through his hands. The pass was a little high. Third down coming up, eight yards to go. But he was open on the outside out there. Defender is probably been five yards ahead of him. I think the defender is a little worried about that over the top oh, ball yeah, that we've seen was. a couple times, which certainly opens up things underneath. It's really the first poorly placed ball we've seen from Bogart. He's got a nice, accurate arm. He throws that one, and it's caught for at least near a first down. Players fighting for the football, and Bluffton comes up with it. And that one was caught by Cameron Kuglin. And it's enough for a Citizens National Bank first down. And he had to limp off the field, and it looks like a cramping situation for sure. Three wide receivers split out to the right side. One goes in motion, that's Stackhouse. And Bogart oh, wanted to run out. that option play, but he's met in the backfield. By Mitchell Blank and Ethan Lukaville. And that will drop the Pirates back. Five yards, first down 15. Sorry, second down 15 now. Well, we've known all night long that Ethan Lukaville's assignment has been to get to the quarterback. This time Mitchell Blank says, I'll help you out a little bit. Six minutes to play, third quarter, second and long. They throw this one over the middle. That's Braden Jordan with the catch. Only ends up going for about three yards. Make it two yards, third down, 13 coming up. Yeah, they're still working on the spot on the far side there. Make it third and 12. It's going to be another big third down opportunity for the Bluffton Pirates. One they really have to convert on to keep themselves in this game. It's only midway through the third quarter, but. Pirates over the top and just out of reach of an open Griffin Stackhouse who got behind the defense. If he could have caught that while running, no, no question he'd be in the end zone. And now the Pirates forced to punt down 21 points. Yeah, he was wide open out there. I think though, even if he would have caught the ball, his momentum probably would have had him gone down right in that spot, but that would have been the first down and on about the 20 yard line at that point. 
Basil will punt. Morris and Harris back to return. This is a good snap, end over end kick. Takes a nice hop and a smart play by the Rockets. They pick it up and they get around the edge, eventually going out of bounds, but can't be happy if you're a pirate coach because they just allowed him to speed right around the edge and get probably 15 yards more than he should have. Well, I think he was trying to squirt it out of bounds on that kick, but you know Morris was able to pick it up, and that's a dangerous guy to let pick up the ball because if you give him any kind of a gap at all, he's going to give it you know, 10, 15, 20 yards on you. So the Rockets now with time and score on their side. Still plenty of time to play in this game, but when you're down 21, it doesn't always feel that way. No, because now you've got the Rockets in there and can just kind of consistently move it down the field. You move the chains. That's the biggest thing for the Rockets right now when you're up by three scores. You know, just move the chains. You know, keep the, keep the offense for Bluffton on the, off the field. Here's another hot pass tossed to Tanner Leakty. And Leakty picks up a couple on first down. Leakty picks up three, second down seven coming up. Nice four yards though on first down. Pick up another four yards on this play here, and you're right back into you know a third and short situation. And the Rockets broke the huddle with too few players. Leakty comes running on. Looks like he's limping just a bit as he runs to the far side of the field. Luganville goes in motion, and Ooh. he's wrapped up in the backfield. That's a nice job by the Pirates and number ten Noah Bricker. Bricker got through that line and found himself all alone with a big Ethan Luganville running right at him. Up for the challenge though. Drops him back two yards, or excuse me, four yards, back to the original line of scrimmage and a third and 10. This is gonna be a big third and 10 here. Pirates gonna have to shut up that, sew up that middle though, not let them make on that slant pass. Meyer wants to throw. There it is. And might have been knocked down. The pass was low nonetheless, and coverage there was Landon Worcester. Uh, you got a hand on it. I think this is the Rockets' first punt of the night. The first one I can remember. Yeah. yeah. Pirates send Shuttler back to return, as well as Braden Jordan. That's Aiden Morris averaging, the first game average just over 36 yards a punt. Punted three times against the Bulldogs. Good snap, kick is away. This one hangs up a bit as it goes out and looks like it makes it about, let's see, a net of 15 yards or so. Yeah, off the side of his foot. So the Pirates will get the ball. Still waiting for the official spot from the referees. Sometimes it gets a little bit difficult when a ball sails out of bounds like that, figuring out where it crossed the sideline. Yeah, that's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, you're standing over there with the referee, but you know, just watch it and say, oh, okay, it's this one here. This one. Right. Oh, oh, not sure. I feel like you get about five yards of grace. Yeah, when you yeah, you do. Yes. So they place it on the 46. Ball at the 46-yard line, first down and 10, Boston. First and 10 for the Pirates, trying to eat into this lead a bit. They need some momentum. They need something to really spark them right now. They'll start with a run to Shuttler, and he picks up six or seven yards. I'll tell you what. These first down runs have been very effective for Bluffton. They've gotten about three, four, five, sometimes six yards on those first down runs. But then they kind of fizzle away. I mean, it's, you know, they really need something to spark them. You know, in that first half, they got a couple deep passes that Dirth was able to pull down. That kind of sparked their offense a little bit. They need something like that now to, to get your confidence back a little bit. And goes in motion. They'll keep it on the ground. 
Shuttler picks up a few more. He's close to the first down marker, but I think he came up just a bit short. And so it will be a third down and short for the Pirates. Ball into Rocket territory at the 45. You got to give Shuttler credit, too, because that's not an easy run going up against that defensive line for uh, Pandora Gilboa. He's run right into the heart of that. And you saw there, you know, they're gang tackling up front. He's going to fill every one of those in the morning, I'll tell you that. Absolutely. Third and short. Bogart out to the left side, and oh. he's hit hard and goes down short of the line to gain. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, but he was hammered. That looked like Eli Lucanville maybe on that tackle. So ball back to the 45. They'll get a fourth down and one. Fans on our side here not happy about the spot. Yes, yeah, the forward progress, not where the ball runner runner ended up. Oh, good D. Oh, nice run. Shuttler though. keeps his feet and falls forward for the Citizens National Bank first down, and that was hard work. That, that was all him on that one there. He was stopped a yard short of the first down and he just kept moving forward and moving forward and kind of sliding off the defenders until he got the first down. Great job by that young man. A senior too. Showing his senior ability right there. Looking to pass, going deep down the right side once again and almost intercepted as Garrett, or excuse me, Carson Meyer laid out, pass overthrown to Durth. We got a flag down though at the line of scrimmage. Waiting on the call here, neither team really going anywhere. Referee still talking. And we've got a hold, this time against the Rockets. So some free yards for the Pirates here. Ball up to the 34 and another Citizens National Bank first down. Hmm. Looked like they called a hold in the middle of the the line, yeah. so it's not something you see on the defense very often. No. Either way, Pirates get those yards. We're under a minute to play in the third quarter. Hmm. And we've got someone going early. Ball start against the Pirates, so it was Bluffin that went early. And they'll lose five yards, and it'll be a first and 15. Again, one of those mistakes by the Pirates. You get a little bit of momentum. You can pick up a penalty on the Rockets. You get some yardage from first down that way. Then you make a mistake, and then you go back, backwards. They've just really got to sew that stuff up. And the Pirate that committed the penalty immediately taken out of the game. Down near 30 seconds to play, man goes in motion. And they'll keep this one on the ground with Shuttler, hit at the line of scrimmage, keeps his feet, picks up a couple there. Well, he was hit by Wyatt Russell. And you could hear that all the way up here, that was helmet on helmet. That was a, a big hit, no doubt. <laughs> Down to 10 seconds here before the end of the quarter, and it looks like the Pirates will let the clock tick to zero. So only one score here in the third quarter, a 40-yard touchdown pass to Derek Mag, And the Rockets find themselves up 28 to seven as we step aside. Fourth quarter coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Wishing the best of luck to both teams tonight. 
28 to 7, the score here at Pandora. The Rockets on top of the Bluffton Pirates. Evan Skilleter and Darn Evergall with you tonight. Nick Nunez, the camera guy next to me. Pirates with a second down and 13 as that pass incomplete intended for Hayden Durth. So a third and 14 coming up for the Pirates. That one had a little bit of smoke on it too. It I did. Mean, it, <laughs> Dearth wasn't that far down the field. He was like six yards downfield, and that thing was really rocketed in there. Yeah, a little bit of frustration now for the for the Pirates. Boy, they just not have not been able to sustain anything. Bogart throws this one complete over to Gavin Bogart, who dropped the football. It ended up going out of bounds. Pirates will, will keep possession. Didn't get too many yards on that play, so it's a big fourth down coming up. At this point, probably have to go for it. Yeah, I think you do. Just just for no, no other reason is you just need to do something. And you know what? After a few jump balls that Dirth was able to pull down, they kind of went away from that, which seemed like it'd be effective with the mismatch to Dirth. We'll see if they consider lobbing one up for him here. Yeah, they've gone more with the, the little out passes instead. Shuttler goes in motion. Bogart looks to pass, throws this one over the middle, and incomplete. Too high for his intended target, Gavin Bogart. Good defense by Colin Harris on that one. And so the Rockets hold on fourth down, and it will be their football. And I'll tell you what. This is a team that has run the ball very effectively. They can certainly eat a lot of clock up on this drive if they stick to what they've been good at tonight. Yeah, if you go to your, your workhorse and, and Lucaville, just keep handing it off to him and let him run it. You know, either that or have Carson Meyer run it out of the backfield too. But, you know, they haven't seen a whole lot of, of Andrew Miller, I think, on, on carries either. But he's another weapon for him back there. Rockets come out on the shotgun. Both runners in the backfield on either side of Meyer. He takes the snap, and just like that, hands to Andrew Miller. And look oh, at look Miller at keep his feet. Andrew Miller near the first down marker. Forward progress will give him enough yards. So another Citizens National Bank first down. Wow, what a great run by Andrew Miller. He comes up limping a little bit, but man, he just a strong run right through the middle there. Now the Pirates will take a timeout. We'll take it with them, 28 to seven on the Web Insurance scoreboard. We step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Our scoreboard is made possible by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. 28 to seven on that Web Insurance scoreboard. First and 10 for the Rockets. They take the snap, give it to Luganville, who runs to the right side, picks up a couple more to tack on to his already great performance tonight. Over 100 yards for Ethan Luganville. Went over 100 in his first game last week against Columbus Grove. He has six total touchdowns <laughs> in two games. Incredible. And it's nice to have back there Andrew Miller as well. To, you know, to compliment you. You know, you're not, you can't key on Lucaville all night long because Miller just showed that he can be a threat for him too. I don't want to try to tackle either of these guys. Oh no! Look Miller at both of them on the carry, and he hits the hole hard and falls forward for more positive yardage. Pirates down to two timeouts as they trail this one by 21. Well, Lucaville coming in at 210, Andrew Miller at 200. And both of them, if you look at the, their lower leg strength, they are just strong down there. We've got an injured player on the field. The trainers will come out. We'll step aside as well, 10-21 to go. 28-7, to seven, Rockets on top. Tonight's first downs are presented by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Welcome back for a third and four for the Rockets. 
They give it to Luganville. He's got a lot of space down the right side. Oh, look out, He's look off out, to the races out. across the 20. He's got one man to beat, stays on his feet, and he goes in for the 46-yard touchdown run. He just shook off that defender when he got around the five-yard line, so there's no way you're going to keep me from scoring again. Ethan Lugabill, fourth touchdown run of the night. That was impressive, too. He just blew right through the line. Got into the open field, and then it became a foot race, and he won that one. Suter on for the PAT. He's perfect tonight as the Rockets look to go up 28. Snap a little low, they get the hold down, it's up and it is good. 35 to seven, the Rockets leading the Pirates in the fourth quarter as we step aside. More coming up after the break on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Wishing the best of luck to both teams tonight. And it's Pandora so far with all the luck on their side as they have put up 35 points against the Bluffton Pirates. And we got a flag here as it looked like a Pirate has tackled a rocket on that return, so likely a holding penalty. Preston Culver from 65, and actually they pointed toward the Rockets. No, I believe he messed that up. Yeah, yeah he's, he's going to switch back it. the other way. There's Culver on uh, Aiden Morris over there. So we'll see where this puts the ball for the start of the drive for Bluffton, who, I mean, we've said it so many times, and I'm sure Pirate fans are getting tired of hearing it but they've played pretty well tonight. They've moved the ball well. They just have had a lot of penalties and a lot of errors that have caused them to not be able to finish these drives. Yeah, they just, you know, those penalties have come at the wrong time for sure. Not that there's ever a good time, but you can get away with some penalties, but you can't get away with them when you're trying to keep momentum going on a particular drive, and that's what's happened here. The Pirates will run the option play out to the right side. And maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like will actually drop a yard. The other thing, too, for the Pirates, they've had opportunities. I mean, there was turnovers by the Rockets, and they just didn't capitalize on them. But they haven't had an answer for Lukeville all night long. And he's just been so strong and, and so quick. And you saw it on that 46-yard run. He's got some speed, too. The three wide receivers out to the left side. They're going to throw this over the middle. and looked like they had a man, but it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So that brings up third down. Ten yards to go. Might have been Mitchell Blank that got his hand up there. I mean, that's been their bread and butter play all night long over the middle like that on that short pass and this time the Rockets knock it down. Another third down up, you know, for Bluffton. And this one is caught by Gavin Bogart, but he's brought down immediately and it brings up a fourth down and out comes the punt unit once again for the Pirates. And this is going to give uh, Pandora a good field position. He's going to have to really get a good punt off to get that battle out of there. Hazel will be standing near his own goal line. So it's his back heel on the three. Good snap, kick is away. That's a nice one, but it will be returned. Colin Harris looking for some space, but he's brought down by Gavin Bogart. A great field position for the Rockets to start this drive. We'll see if they go with the starters or if they consider throwing some reserves out there. It looks like the starters will stay. I don't know, after last year, 
<laughs> That's true. I got a feeling the Rockets are enjoying this a little bit, you know, because they had the opportunity, like we said, they had an opportunity to win it last year, and uh, it slipped away from them, and I don't think they want that to happen. They're not going to let that happen tonight. They're going to definitely go after them. Keep it on the ground this time. It's Miller, and Miller with positive yardage. Looks like he picks up about four, so a second down six coming up. And you've talked about it. Ethan Lugaville, certainly the workhorse for this Pandora team. But to have another guy back there, an Andrew Miller, that can run the ball, relieve some of that pressure, give you a couple downs to breathe a little bit. Now, I say that, but you know that Miller likes to throw blocks as well. Oh, yeah. Or well, excuse that. me, that, that Luganville does as he seals off some space for Miller to get another Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, you can't key on Lucaville because you got to worry about Andrew Miller. And if you worry about both of those guys, then you're, you know, Carson Meyer just eats you up with one of those short passes over the middle to Aiden Morris or Colin Harris. They're going to keep it with Miller as he gets really close to another first down. Close enough that referees have to take a second look. And it will be just short. So a second and short coming up is. Miller seems to be the main guy so far tonight. Or this drive, excuse me. And he's going to add to his stats tonight. He only had two yards last year on or last week on four carries. So Columbus Grove definitely shut him down last week, but you know he's picking up some nice yardage tonight. Now Luganville alone in the backfield. He'll get the carry this time, looking for some space. Doesn't have much, but has enough for a first down, and he doesn't need much as he's still on his feet down inside the five-yard line. My goodness. Another Citizens National Bank first down for the Rockets, and they're knocking on the door of another score. And I'll guarantee the whole Bluffton interior defensive line thought, we got this guy stopped right now. And he just kept banging and banging and banging until he got in there. Luganville looking for touchdown number five on the night. Had three last week. Will they go to him here? They will. And he's close. And it's about the half yard line. We don't have a call from the referees yet. They finally blow the whistle. And I think they're going to say he's short. Now they're going to go have a chat. OK, <laughs> so a touchdown. Kind of an anticlimactic one, but number five for Ethan Luganville. This time from three yards out. And my goodness, what a night for that young man. Nearly 200 yards on the ground. Five touchdowns to follow up a three touchdown performance last week. And, and, you know, to be in the whole game like this, too, I mean, he hasn't taken a break at all. He's played defense and offense as well. So talk about conditioning for him. And Suter still perfect on PATs this year as he punches that one in. It is 42 to 7. We'll have a running clock when we come back. Stay tuned. More after this on WOSN. Five touchdowns for Ethan Luganville as he punches one in from three yards out. And a good PAT from Elam Suter makes the score 42 to seven as the Rockets kick it back to the Pirates. This clock will be continuous as Pirates get out to the 25 yard line. Now it does stop for a change of possession which we just had here. But as soon as the play is run, then the clock will continue to tick. So it is Timeouts, change of possession, and injuries that the clock will stop for. What a great night for the Rockets all the way around. I mean, you know, they took advantage of whatever opportunity they got. And they just put together some nice drives all, all the way around. Mixed up the pass and the run very effectively. Good play calling by Matt Hershey and his coaching staff. 
And you're right, Evan. They, and, you know, Bluffton has not really played that bad. It's just that they made too many mistakes on penalties and stuff. And I suppose it's that they couldn't really stop Luganville, right? That's it. So the Pirates get about a yard on first down, second and nine coming up. For a team that, I mean, you look at things objectively, the Pirates, a ba balanced offense. Bogart can certainly sling the ball around, although here in the second half, perhaps a little sloppy in the passing game, but they certainly can threaten in the air. And Shuttler's done a nice job on the ground, and we've seen Bogart run a nice option offense as well. So this isn't a bad team that you're seeing on the field, just one that's had a really, really rough night. That pass incomplete. Yeah, you got to give, you know, not only the Rocket offense, though, the, the Rocket defense has played just outstanding tonight. You know, they've taken, you know, they've given up yards, no doubt, but they didn't break on any of them. Uh, they've given up a couple of long plays, but again, they were able to stop the drives. You know, ever since that first score by Bluffton, they pretty much shut down the Pirates on every opportunity. So, you know, a good game all the way around for the Rockets and, and the Pirates, you know, too. They've been, they got to go back now and, and figure out what, what were wrong between game one or game one to game two, you know. Yeah, absolutely. That one doesn't go anywhere. So they might have gotten a few inches out of that play. The clock continues to tick. It'll stop on a change of possession as the Pirates send the punt unit onto the field. And again, an opportunity for the Rockets to get good field position again. You can hear the Pandora coaches yelling for the JV offense. Nice looking punt there as it'll be fielded by Colin Harris and a fair catch called for around the 45 yard line. And here comes all the fresh jerseys now for the Rockets. Ball down at the 44. The Rockets will have Lipsick next week, former BVC foe, but Lipsick of the NWC now. A third. Northwest Conference team for the Rockets. That's right. And here's a run down the left side. That's Ben Burkholder. New quarterback into the game is Corey Girton, 5'9 freshman. Ball down at the 44. No gain on the play. Second and 10 coming up. Well, and you know, the coaching staff for Rockets probably sent there in these new faces out there and said, you know, just maintain them, what you're going on right now. But you know, these guys, they want to score as well. Now run to the right side. That's Burkholder that again. No, that's number six that time. That's Lucas Deckard. Deckard gets back to the line of scrimmage that time as well. So a third and 10, under three minutes to play. Beautiful night though for football, I'll tell you what. Once that sun went away, yeah. it was perfect conditions. Girton's gonna look to pass, he throws this one. Nice looking pass oh. as it's caught there by Brock Stahl. And how about that arm from Mr. Girton? That's only a freshman, folks. Very impressive. I mean, nice route ran there by the receiver as well. That boy can sling it. Yes, he can. So another Citizens National Bank first down. Two wide receivers split out to the left side for Girton. He'll take the snap. Here's Ben Burkholder. Burkholder gets a few yards on first down. And refuses to go down too. That's right. <laughs> Seen a pattern to <of> that tonight. <laughs> and Carson Myers is a junior, so he's got another year to go. But 
This young man out there right now can throw the ball. Second and nine after a gain of a yard by Burkholder. And it'll be Burkholder again on the left side, this time picking up about four. Make it third down and five. One minute, 10 seconds to go. In a game that felt like it'd be close, 7-7 after one quarter. But all of a sudden, five unanswered touchdowns for the Pandora Rockets. Yeah, the, this game changed really fast. I mean, I was surprised. I expected a tough game tonight. I expected a close game as well. And But the Rockets just took advantage of them. And Girton runs out to the right side, gets the clock under the play clock, and so they don't need to run another play. They're acting like they might run one, though. Let's we'll see. Sometimes you're in a, a why not scenario. Yeah. Man. Why not let him hey, sling let the ball him, around one something. more time? Now the coach is waving them off. They're not going to run a play here. So, Dar, a great game for the Rockets. A beautiful night for football. The Rockets will move to one and one. The Pirates will fall to one and one with plenty of time left. And now we actually have a flag on the play. I think we've got maybe too many guys out there. An illegal substitution. Sometimes that happened. All they wanted to do was not run a play. The coaches kept saying, don't run a play, don't run a play. And all the players were looking over here like, wait, please? Can we yeah. run a play, please? We'll, we'll do something. <laughs> Give us an opportunity to run one. So your final score, the Rockets win this one 42 to seven. Five touchdowns from Ethan Luganville. Want to thank our sponsors one more time, Web Insurance, Citizens National Bank, and Sprunger Insurance for all of their support of this station. And as always, want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Football on WOSN. For Dar Nevergall, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.